Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Dan Ortiz, AKA Dan the Animator. Go ahead, follow me on social. I'm gonna just start getting this online presence going, 2020 vision. Please follow me along for the journey. Um, I'll be posting vlogs, I'll be posting video, editorial content. Also, uh, the main purpose of this is to teach motion design. Um, and my goal is to really just help people contribute back to the community. And then hopefully this will go lead off to somewhere else. Um, and then let's just get it from there. But today I wanted to stop in to uh, show you guys how I animate images using Photoshop and After Effects. Pretty simple technique. It's been done millions and millions and millions and millions of times. But I thought I would just break down my process because I feel like there's some extra steps that I do that will help just make your animations a little more dynamic. Feel free to follow along on this video. I hope you guys learned something. If not, uh, questions, concerns, drop them in the comments below. I'll be reading, I'll be watching, I'll be listening. I'm here to help you guys and uh, let's get it. So I went ahead, selected my image, opened it up in Photoshop, and this is what we have. What I'm going to do first thing is select my layer, bring it down here to make a copy of it. I'm going to turn off the bottom layer. You could tell that it's locked here, so let's just keep that as is. First thing we have to do is create three different layers for this image. On the keyboard, I select P for my pen tool, and I'm going to basically cut out a shape of our athlete. So I want to isolate him from the rest of the image. I'm going to come back and check with you guys in a few minutes once I get done with this and then I'll show you what's next. So now that we have our athlete and our sign clipped out in a mask already, what we need to do is create a clean plate for our background. On the keyboard, hit S and that'll bring up your clone stamp tool. And we're going to take a sample of the background. By holding down Option, you can see the target. Let's select here. Now we can come over here and paint out our subject. This is gonna be used as our background image. We have our sign, and then we have our subject. Now this is ready to take into After Effects. Here we are in After Effects. Let's go ahead and bring in our PSD. Double click on the project panel, select your image. We're gonna do composition. I do not want this as a Photoshop sequence. Make sure that's unchecked, open. Bring this in as a composition. I'm gonna create a new composition, 1920 by 1080. We'll keep it at 23,976, and we'll have our composition at five seconds. And let's just double click on the comp that we brought in. And here's our PSD from Photoshop. As you can tell, we have all of our different layers. We have our background, we have our sign, and we have our subject. So let's go ahead and just copy these layers. We're gonna come back to comp one, command V, now I want to just resize these layers so they just match the comp. Command option shift G and H. G will do vertically, H will do horizontally. So we have three layers here in the timeline. We're gonna go ahead and just make these 3D layers. We're gonna go to layer, new, camera. We're gonna go ahead and keep this at 35 millimeters. Right here on one view, we're gonna select two, horizontal. And then when you come into this left window here, just make sure this is at top view because I want to be able to see how far these layers are stacked in Z-Space. So I know I want to move my background layer back. So let's go ahead and select that. On the left screen here, let's just move this back in Z-Space. Right about there. My sign, I want it to be behind him. So let's select the sign next and push this back in Z-Space. And then we have our subject. Now we select our background layer. On the keyboard, hit S for scale. And then we're just going to scale this image up to fit uh, the composition. We can also move it up a little bit too. You can kind of play around with this. So now that our layers are 3D and we have a camera, now we can go ahead and start to play with some parallax animations. So in the two view, let's go back to one. And with our camera selected on the keyboard, if you hit C, this will bring up our transform properties. And now kind of move around in, in 3D space so you can kind of see what we're working with here. So you can see from the side profile, we have our subject, we got the sign, and then we have our background image. If you want this to be a little bit more of a parallax effect, feel free to grab your background and move it further back in Z-Space. On the keyboard, you can hit P. So right now ours is at 900. Maybe let's put it at 1500. No, let's, let's put it at 2000. And then let's scale it up. There we go. Remember, we'll go back to our two views. And then the sign, let's just move this back to be right about there. 
and we'll go back to one view. So whenever I work with the 3D camera and 3D layers in a timeline, I always like to attach my camera to a null. So if we go to layer, new, null object, select our layer, turn it into a 3D object. Now if we go back down to our camera and we could pick whip, pick whip <laughs> this to our null, and then we're just gonna select the null, hit return, and we're gonna type in cam, cam controller. So now our camera is a child of the null. The null is the parent. So now whatever we do to this null, it'll affect the camera. So I like to do this because it gives us two points of animation. We can animate the camera, and now we can also animate our null to give us a little bit more control. So with our camera selected, just to show you a few things that we can adjust is if you twirl down the properties and we go to camera options, depth of field, we can turn that on now. And if we go ahead and select our aperture, is currently set to 17, but let's put it at 500. Now you can really see how our background is affected by this because now we're playing with focal lengths. So let's go back to our two views. So if we select our focus distance, looking at the top view, you can see how our camera changes right here. So that's what's gonna be in focus. Like that's our, that's our, our lens and that's the focus point. So if I push this back to right there, now our sign will be in focus and our subject is out. We're gonna animate this. So basically what we can do now is we can select our focus distance, drop a keyframe, and we're gonna to go to the end at five seconds. We're gonna drop another keyframe. So our controller is gonna be how we animate the position of the camera. On the keyboard, hit P. We're gonna drop a keyframe at the end. We're gonna to come to the beginning and drop another keyframe. So I basically want this animation to start punched in all the way. So in the beginning of the timeline with the keyframe selected, in our Z space, we are just gonna grab this value and we're gonna push it all the way up. So we'll start at a face profile shot and then we will animate our camera to go back. If we come down here and we select D Lillard, we know that his layer is here. So I want our focal point to start at the sign. So it's gonna start on the sign, welcome to Oakland, and then we're gonna to go to our end of our composition and we're gonna animate our focus distance to be where our subject is at because I want him to be in focus when the camera pulls back. So right there. So now if you preview your animation, you'll start to notice how we have that 3D movement in the back. So right now, this animation is very linear. It's just two keyframes. There's not really any excitement going on to it. So I think the next step we're gonna do is dive into a little bit of the graph editor and we're just gonna make this animation a little more dynamic. So let's go ahead and select both of our keyframes hold down shift and select these ones here, and we're gonna select our graph editor. The eyeball here, we're gonna do show selected properties. Our keyframes are being selected, so that's what's moving, and we're gonna do speed graph. So then now select these keyframes, and then we're gonna select the front two, and we're going to select this one here, easy ease. That's just a good starting point. Now we're gonna select our N2 keyframes because I want it to start off fast, like a really strong ease. So I'm gonna select these two keyframes, and I'm gonna grab this yellow point, holding down shift, I just like to hold down shift because it retains the snap so I, my, my graph editor won't be going all over the place. So I'm gonna grab these first two keyframes and then just go over here and snap that. So now we have, you can see this graph, this graph it starts off. So in the beginning of the timeline, when we hit play, that is going to start off really fast and then it's just gonna slowly come to an ease. This just makes your animation a little more dynamic. It's not so linear. So the graph editor is a great way to just add some different speed variation to your animations. Last thing we can do to add a final touch to this is we can use the puppet tool on our image. So I'm gonna select our subject and with the puppet tool, I'm gonna drop a pin everywhere there would be a joint on his body. So I'm gonna put one at his neck. We're gonna go on his shoulder, his other shoulder, elbow, wrist, wrist, pelvis area. And let's just put one more for his hips and one in the middle of the forehead. We could grab each point and now we can animate his body. So what I did was just animate his head to move very subtly. You can animate his hand just a little bit. And that's really the process. Once you import your images, turn them into 3D layers, add a camera, and then the puppet tool to your main subject. Then you can feel free to animate that and it'll just bring your, your image to life a little bit more. So I hope you guys learned some things in this tutorial. Hope to catch you on the next one. Thanks.